Remember Joseph? Yeah, the Technicolor Dreamcoat guy? He's one of 12 brothers, but you wouldn't really know it, because when he was young, the others threw him in a well and left him for dead. So he kind of struck out on his own. In fact, he made the most of the situation and grew up to become Pharaoh's number two man in Egypt, despite the fact that he was a Jew. Now we find him just after his brothers came to beg him for help during tough economic times. Only they don't recognize their grown-up and now powerful brother, and they have no idea that he's actually trying to trick them into leaving his youngest brother, Benjamin, behind. This is where we join the story of Vaigash. Judah pleaded with Joseph. Look, man, you're practically the pharaoh. You couldn't possibly understand the lives of little people like us. If anything happened to Benjamin, our dad would just die. So please, please let me take his place. Don't make me go home without my youngest brother. Enough, Joseph thundered, and the room went still. Get out, out, everyone, leave me with these men. And with that, the Egyptians fled the scene, and Joseph was left with his terrified brothers, who feared what fiery words or brutal acts might erupt next from this unpredictable man. But further punishment never came. Instead, to Judah's shock, Joseph broke down in sobs. He wailed. I have to tell you something. I am your long-lost brother. I am Joseph. And then, sounding like the vulnerable child his brothers had abandoned so many years ago, he asked, Is my dad still alive? Judah stared at Joseph aghast as the other brothers shook with disbelief. Guys, I swear, Joseph said. It's me. Look, I know I've been a jerk. I wanted to punish you for having sold me out when we were kids. But you should not punish yourselves. I see now that it was not you who sent me here but God himself, so that I could make a difference in people's lives. And as you can see, God set me up pretty good. Look, times might seem tough right now, but there are another five years of famine ahead. Please, go get my father, tell him I'm kind of a big deal over here in Egypt, and I can provide for all of you during the coming hardships. So, the brothers went home to Canaan, packed up Jacob and their families, and returned to Egypt for the big reunion between Joseph and his father. Making good on his promise, Joseph provided for his family during the famine, and they flourished in Egypt. He managed to save the rest of the people of Egypt, too. Unfortunately for the Egyptians, he did so by making almost the entire population into indentured servants of Pharaoh. So Joseph did some shady stuff at times in his life in the name of self-preservation, and his own brothers did some pretty awful things to him, too. In their defense, nobody's perfect, except maybe God. Even the great heroes of Judaism, like Joseph, were just people like you and me who made difficult choices and sometimes mistakes. But their ancient stories and actions built some of the cornerstones of modern Jewish life and thought today. In the story of Vayigash, for example, the Jewish will to survive and thrive against the odds, and the importance of taking care of your family, even when they make you angry, is foretold by the choices Joseph made way back then. <laughs>